Okay, so we're going to be talking about empirical and molecular formulas in class. Uh, before we begin, there's a little poem to remember empirical and molecular formulas. Um, it goes something like this. Percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by small, convert to whole. And we will hit all these steps except the first one in this elemental analysis problem. Okay. If you have percents, percent is not a unit, so you can't use that to do anything. So when you have a percent, we'll talk about what you do with that in class. But once you get your percent, you have a mass. So in this elemental analysis problem, I have a compound that's carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen. A small amount of that compound is burned, combusted, and I get some carbon dioxide and water. And I'm supposed to determine the empirical formula of the carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen compound. So you actually know everything you need to know to solve this. So even though you can't write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction because you do not know the formula of the carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen compound, you can write a skeletal equation. So in skeletal form, I have a hydrocarbon. When it's combusted or burned in air, it's reacted with O2. And that's going to produce carbon dioxide and water and a nitrogen product. It doesn't even tell us what it is. Okay, and what do I know about the things that are in here? I know I have 0.1156 grams of this. I get 0.1638 grams of CO2 and 0.1676 grams of water. Okay. What we need to do to figure this out is we need to use the law of conservation of mass, which says that mass is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. So when we look at this skeletal equation, although we don't know how much carbon is in this hydrocarbon, we know that all of it ended up over here in the CO2. Likewise, with the hydrogen, we don't know how much hydrogen is here, but we know all of it ended up in the H2O. So if we take a look at carbon, we can start with this mass of carbon dioxide and figure out the mass of carbon that was in there and the number of moles of carbon that are in there. Because remember, when you're doing writing a formula, x, y, and z are mole ratios and not just ratios of atoms. So, if I'm working with carbon, the only thing I know about carbon is that I have 0.1638 grams of CO2. And that's all my carbon is in the CO2. So to figure out just information about the carbon, the very first thing is I have to convert this to moles. So one mole of CO2 is 44.01 grams of CO2. And that gives me 0.003722 moles of CO2. So when I look at this formula, I know there's one mole of carbon for one mole of CO2, so that must mean there are also 0.003722 moles of carbon. And later I will need to know what that mass is. I'll need to know both the number of moles and mass for carbon and hydrogen both. So I'm going to take this right now and convert it into grams of carbon as well. So one mole of carbon is 12.01 grams of carbon, which means that I have a total of 0 0.04470 grams of carbon. So over here in this formula, that's how much carbon I had, because that's how much carbon I ended up with over here. So now when we look at H2O, we know all our hydrogen is sitting in that H2O. So if I start with 0.1676 grams of H2O, I know how many moles that is, because one mole of H2O is 18.02 grams of H2O. So what that tells me is that I have produce 
0, 1 times 10 to the negative third moles of H2O. Now, unlike with the carbon, there are two hydrogens for every one H2O. Two hydrogens, one H2O. So if I take this number and multiply it by two, that tells me how many moles of hydrogen there are. So if I take this number, multiply it by two, I get 0 0.01860 moles of H. And again, to convert that to grams, I just know that there's 1.01 grams of H in one mole of H, which gives me a mass of hydrogen of 0 0.01879 grams. Okay, so again, going back to this formula, x, y, and z are, is a mole ratio. That's a mole ratio of carbon to hydrogen to nitrogen. That's what that formula represents. Well, I know what the ratio of carbon and hydrogen is because I have moles of carbon here and moles of hydrogen here. Now I have to figure out a way to figure out, well, how much nitrogen was in that original compound. So we go again back to the law of conservation of mass. The total mass of the sample was 0.1156. So I know that out of that total, 0 .00, 0 0.04470 grams are carbon and 0 0.01879 grams are hydrogen, which means the rest of this must be my nitrogen. So if I start with 0.1156 grams of sample and subtract out the carbon, and subtract out the hydrogen. What I have left is the nitrogen. And that works out to 0 0.0512 grams of nitrogen. So that plus that plus that equals 0.1156, the law of conservation of mass. And now, to get the formula, again, I need mole ratio. So now I need my moles of nitrogen. So one mole of nitrogen is 14.01 grams of nitrogen. So when I do that, that tells me that there's 0 0.003720 moles of nitrogen. So that's the last number I need to do my mole ratio. So if you remember the rhyme, percent to mass, we didn't have percents, but we started with masses, mass to moles. So here I have three moles. Divide by small. Divide by the smallest number of moles that you see up here. The smallest number of moles is moles of nitrogen. So I'm going to divide the moles of carbon by the moles of nitrogen, the moles of hydrogen by the moles of nitrogen, and the moles of nitrogen by the moles of nitrogen. So first, I'm going to start with carbon, 0.003722. Divide by the smallest, 0.003722. 720, and that's pretty darn close to 1, so we're just going to call it 1. It's 1.00 something. Now, I go to my hydrogen, so that's 1 carbon. 0 0.01860 divided by 0 0.003720 is equal to just about 2.5. Okay, since that's not really close to a whole number, if it was like 0.9, I could round it. If it was 0.01, I could round it. But 2.5, I can't round that. So right now I'm stuck with this 2.5 for hydrogen. And then finally I divide the nitrogen by itself. 720 divided by 0 0.003720. And that's one nitrogen. So, if I were to stop at this point and write the formula, I would write C H 2.5 N, because that's the smallest whole number ratio 
That's the smallest ratio. It's not whole numbers, but it's the smallest ratio of moles. There's one mole of carbon to two and a half, one mole of carbon to two and a half moles of hydrogen to one mole of oxygen. Now I can't write a formula like that because formulas do have to have whole numbers. So, but I need to maintain this one to two point five to one ratio. So if I multiply each of the subscripts by two, that will maintain the same ratio and get rid of that 0.5. So if I multiply each subscript by two, I get C2H5N2. And that would be the empirical formula of this compound.